day back on the road. First couple of days usually suck after being home. It's so so sad and depressing getting back on the road. But it's time to go back and make some money. I am in Lubbock, Texas. I'm fixing a deadhead all the way to Dallas, Texas. Pick up a load there. I got two picks and one drop. I got one pickup in Dallas, Texas, and the other one in Lithia Springs, Georgia, which is right outside Atlanta, Georgia. And then I gotta go up north towards uh, New Jersey. Brunswick, New Jersey, I think. So that's what I'll be doing from today, which is Wednesday till Monday morning at my delivery. I'll be back for Thanksgiving. So I'll be out on the road for a month, maybe a, a little bit over a month. So it sucks being on the road for so long. It really does. I just got here to New Jersey. I got to do my 34 hour reset here. I'm um, here at a pilot. I picked up two loads, one in Dallas and one in Lithia Springs, which is Atlanta, Georgia. And I'm dropping off here in New Jersey. So what I'm hauling is convention center equipment. So it's just different, different type of stuff. We got a bunch of TVs right here. Pretty easy load. But I do gotta do my 34 hour reset here. I got my delivery on Monday morning. And it is Saturday. I uh, had to pay $23 to park here. Crazy, man. There was no free parking when I got here. And I got here at 4, 4 p.m. on Saturday. It wasn't even that late. There was no parking. All the locals taking up all the free parking. I gotta keep an eye on this, though, because I want nobody coming in that stuff. See, I don't have a lock. Somebody left their boots out here. It's a pretty nice little little area. Look at that cat. You got the TA, another truck stop over there. Feels good out here. Nice and fresh, 65 degrees. I just got some bad news. So this morning I delivered my load that I was coming from Texas and then picked up in Georgia and then delivered New Jersey. But delivered that no problem. <laughs> Another load going to Virginia. It's right on top of uh, Richmond, Virginia. So I come over here to my pickup, and I like to check the addresses, like where am I picking up, where am I delivering to, and stuff like that, just to kind of get an idea of where I'm going. And I get here my pickup, and then I'm looking at the address where I'm delivering to, which is at a shopping center, a coffee shop, shopping. That's at a shopping center, so it's a small place. But I mean, that's not, you know, I don't mind going to small type places like that. But the issue is that there are no dogs there. So there's nowhere for me to back up. And usually places like that, they'll have uh, a forklift on location and a pallet jack. If the vicinity doesn't have dogs. So I call this place just to make sure that they had that in order. And the guy's like, no, you know, I don't know. I don't have none of that, I'm not prepared. You know, the, the trucks that usually come, they have a lift gate on the trailer, and it's 22 pallets. It's like, we can do it by hand. I'm like, man, that's gonna take way too long trying to do it by hand. You know, cause it's a brand new coffee shop, so they're ordering, you know, just a bunch of parts for, for the new place. And 
but now I'm just waiting to call back from my dispatcher so you're probably gonna have to cancel this load and I'm gonna see what, what, what else they find me but I call my dispatcher like hey you know I just called to the where I'm taking my load to it there there's no way for them to unload me so so they're probably gonna have to give me tonu which is truck order not used which is basically for me coming over here and then canceling the load for a reason that I'm not at fault for so that's usually a couple hundred bucks so I'm gonna wait and see if they can give me another load we'll see where I go next but I hate I hate driving in this area you know northeast coast I hate it over here you know so much traffic you know this morning I spent an hour and a half driving 30 miles and then not only the traffic nothing I hate is the bunch of curves it's so windy the roads and a lot of a lot of hills a lot of up and downs and then on top of that you gotta add toes so you got a whole bunch of toes going on over here I hate driving on this side of the, the states but so the reason I do come over here is because usually the money pays good that's the only reason why I come over here you know my buddy that works here with me is like I don't care how much they pay I ain't going over there because it just sucks coming this way but so we'll see what they find me so I usually tell them you know if the money's good I'll go that way you can send me anywhere you want as long as the low pays good so I'm just gonna wait it out and see what my dispatcher comes up with he's gonna So right now I'm just here on, on the side of the road waiting for a call back. So my dispatcher finally called me back. So they did cancel that load. They already gave me tow new. And now I gotta go pick up this other load which is more into New York City. Let's see if I can try and get some footage about that. But that one does pay a little bit more. The this next one that I'm gonna go pick up, but that's because I am gonna pay a little bit more tolls and it's more into New York City and nobody wants to go in there so I'm about to go pick it up so I just got loaded man this place is a freaking mess where I'm at there's a million trucks out here let's go see what we got calling some beer today couple of kegs I don't know From like a New Jersey city, there's a million trucks, million of container trucks, trucks that be hauling the containers everywhere. It's gonna be such a pain trying to get out of here. Yeah, so this is where I'm currently at, right here. I, I did take a drone footage and I, I was able to see the Statue of Liberty that's right over here but I didn't get too close enough because I didn't want to lose connection to the drone. But look at all this mess going on here. I've been to the Manhattan one time, which is down here somewhere. I've been down there to a convention center. Now I'm here. I am headed to, uh, to Virginia, which I'm going to end up taking all 95. I'll be going through Philadelphia, Baltimore, Washington, and my drop off is right here. Chantilly, Virginia, it's right here. I got delivered there tomorrow morning.
So this morning, I delivered my load in Virginia. They woke me up like at 5 a.m. I ended up staying the night there at the warehouse and they woke me up at 5 a.m. And they told me to back up into a dock. So after the dispatcher came into the office, which was like 7 a.m., he gave me a load and guess where I'm going? Back up to New Jersey. And I just got here to my next pickup, but here I am dealing with this crazy traffic which this load is going to Largo Florida which is right next to Tampa Florida but let's go to the map and show y'all so this is where I'm at in New Jersey I barely got into New Jersey there's a state line Philadelphia Baltimore Washington this morning, this is where I unloaded Chantley, Virginia. So they brought me back up, back up on 95 through Philadelphia up to where I'm at. And I did have to deal with a little bit of traffic down here in Washington. It's still kind of backed up on that loop, 495. But other than that, everything was good. Now I gotta go back, back south. So this is, this area usually deal with the whole bunch of traffic and you got a bunch of tolls and a bunch of little hills up and down. But now I gotta go to, to Largo, Florida, which I'm gonna take 95 all the way south. Going through Richmond, gonna go down south, 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 going through South Carolina. I'm gonna hit Jacksonville. And in Jacksonville, I'm going to take this, uh, this back road. The way the GPS is taking me is going this way. But that's a, it's 30 miles more than getting on Jacksonville than taking some back roads and coming down. And Largo is right here. So that's where I got my delivery on Thursday morning. Today is Tuesday. So this is what I'm hauling to Largo, Florida, which guessing by where it's going, I'm gonna say it's uh, medical supplies, some type of medical supplies. They had told me the weight on this load is gonna be 35,000, but on the BOL it says 20,000. So it's 15,000 pounds less than what it's supposed to be. I love it when that happens. Because the max max weight that I can haul on a load is right around 45 to 48,000 pounds. So 35,000 pounds was kind of up there pushing it on the heavy side. So 20,000 pounds is way better than hauling 35,000 pounds. Especially in, in this area with uh, a lot of stopping and going, a lot of hills. If you are an owner operator, you need to have a dash cam in your truck. So I just finished installing a, a dash cam on my truck. And uh, I had one before, which was from Keep Trucking, but that one, it only activates if there's an accident. So I wanted one to give me more freedom to look at the, the video. But if it was up to me, every commercial truck would have a, at a minimum, it would have a outward facing dash cam. Cause there's, so many people there are after truckers for insurance claims. If you drive along the interstate, you know, you see all kinds of billboards all the time about if you got hit by a truck, call us, or we have we have made so much money for our clients and all that stuff. Now the inward facing dash cam, I can see where the issue comes in, but there's only a certain certain type of truckers that have an issue with it and that's usually the company drivers because I understand the privacy issue and I'll get to that in a little bit but if I if I own you know let's say three trucks you know I would want inward facing dash cams on my trucks because if there was an accident or something I want to see what was going inside the the truck even if you if the truck driver was not at fault i wanted to see what's going on inside because if you look at all these videos online that, that you see online 
when truckers get into an accident and there happened to be an inward facing camera like 90% of the time it is the truck driver's fault because they be distracted you know they be on the phone eating chips or whatever or falling asleep you know getting up to I saw a video where this dude literally got up while the truck is in motion he got up to I don't know what he was trying to get in, in his bunk bed probably some snacks or something and and what do you know freaking seconds later he's he's in a ditch so I can understand why companies would want inward facing dash cams because stuff like that now on the other side I also understand why truck drivers don't want the inward facing dash cam because of privacy matters right you know they they can say like the, oh the dash cam won't won't be activated unless there is an accident but I had an, I was at a job where I was pretty pretty good friends with with the the safety guy and he had control of the dash cams and he told me that he could turn on the inward facing dash cam at any time that he wanted and it it even has a two way speaker on it and we played a prank on a, one of the drivers it wasn't really a prank but we we just kind of like spied on him and and see what he was doing and we talked to him and he talked back you know he was i don't know what he was doing but but i more than likely if you have an inward facing dash cam they could turn it on at any time that they want usually they'll have like a red, little red light on that flicks on if, if, if it is activated what this e-log company need to do is they need to invent a dash inward facing dash cam that it will only activate if the truck starts to move in motion like like I have keep trucking so I can move my truck under five miles per hour and they won't kick it into driving so it's only when I go past five miles per hour that it will show on my logbook that I'm in drive mode so I think it would be pretty cool if they can come up with something like that for the cameras that way the driver does know that it is activated once you're in motion but once you stop in motion that it'll turn off so on the so, so there's like webcams where you have like this little lid like the little screen i guess you can flip up for the camera whenever you want and then you can uh flip it down so you won't be able to see out of nothing out of that webcam you know because that's for privacy matters so if there were something like a like a camera inward facing camera that whenever it kicks into drive mode that the little like screen it would just flip up and they'll be able to record what's going inside and once you stop the the little screen will cover the the camera once you come to a stop so something like that will be pretty cool it would be better than than having to think that they might be looking at me you know at any time with with something like that you know at least i know that i'm being watched while i'm driving but whenever i'm stopped you know half naked in my truck you know i'll know that there's no possible way for them to invade my privacy well i'm telling you guys some of these cars out here they're just looking for a paycheck they're trying to see how how they can create an accident so they can get a payday and these lawyers they're gonna do everything they can to help them out because that's how they get paid so like i said pre i'm pretty sure like almost every single owner operator has a dash cam and there's a few reasons for that because like me i'm an owner operator so since anything that happens to a truck i'm liable for it if there's an accident or i gotta repair or whatever i'm responsible for it and I got paid for it. So with the dash cam, you know, I can prove to my insurance if I do happen to file a claim that I was not at fault. And that'll speed up the process of getting my truck fixed. Because I'm telling you, this insurance, they like to drag everything out, especially if it's on their insurance that you're filing a claim. You know, I have I have had to, to lawyer up pretty much in the past because they were taking way too long on, on my truck before, you know, on this accident. And I wasn't at fault. But they, they like, the insurance like to take their sweet time. They're trying to try to see if, uh, how not to pay out. 
So as me being the owner operator, I want to protect and take care of my truck. But if you have these company drivers, they, they, don't, they don't care about the truck. You know, they don't take care of them. You know, to them, it's just a job. Like, who cares? If they happen to get fired or whatever, they can just move on to the next company. But, I mean, not for me. I mean, this is my livelihood. This is how I feed my family. So I want to protect my truck if something was to happen. And so that's, that's why I would highly recommend for everybody to have at least an hour facing dash cam. You know, there's, there's thousands of accidents happening every day, you know, a lot of trucks involved, whether a trucker, you know, were they at fault, whether they were at fault or not, there's always trucks involved in accidents across the United States. And at any time, it could be one of y'all, but all you can do is just try to, try to focus on the road and be careful. Cause I'm telling you within a split second, it can be very, very bad. Another reason why I got my own dash cam instead of the keep trucking one was because I wanted to be able to record at night when I'm stopped. I mean, how many times have y'all seen, you know, somebody back into somebody at the truck stops and they just take off and <clears throat> by the time you wake up or get up and see what happened, you know, the other truck already done left. One time I got hit because I was parked at the very edge of the parking lot and luckily for me he, he didn't take off we ended up switching information and stuff like that but he he just happened to to graze my my front bumper he just scratched it scratched the hood you know you know fortunately i was still able to drive it wasn't nothing major his company you know they're they're trying to fight fight a little bit about it but you know luckily the the driver he was honest and told him he was that far because I was parked. I was not moving and he was turning. But the, the safety person on, on their end, you know, that's who, who ended up paying me. They paid me cash because they didn't want to get insurance involved. So they ended up paying me cash and, you know, they were struggling. We we're fighting it out for a little bit. Like, if you don't pay me, you know, I got two different quotes from two different dealerships. If you don't pay me, like, I'm going to file a claim on your insurance. Your truck driver already told me and told you that he was at fault. So after a few weeks, they finally sent me a check in the mail. So yeah, guys, if, if you are looking for a dash cam, I just did a review on a dash cam. Find the link right here. You know, go check it out if you're interested in a dash cam. This, this is a pretty good dash cam. I like it. I give it an 8 out of 10. You know, not, not the best, but definitely worth the money that I paid for. getting unloaded here in, in Largo, Florida, and they're having such a tough time finding me a load just because Florida sucks for the market, especially the drive-in market. So they they called me about this load going to Union City, Georgia, which pays horrible. Uh, it's, it's around 500 miles and it's only paying like 700 bucks. So that's what that's what sucks. It's like 1.2 per mile, something like that. Not even maybe, but that's what sucks about coming to Florida. So every time they want to send me to Florida, I have to tell them like, if you're not getting me around three dollars per mile going into Florida, don't don't even bother getting send me to Florida because not only you're gonna have a bad rate going out, sometimes you you not even be able to get a load to at least pay for the fuel trying to get out of Florida. Sometimes you're gonna to have to deadhead and depending on where you're at, like Tampa, Orlando, or even Miami, depending on where you're at. I mean, that's like six hours of deadheading up north towards Georgia or Alabama, even to South Carolina. And so even like Valdosta, Georgia, my dispatcher said like the freight market there is horrible. So you even have to go even further north to even 
get anything anything that's decent but they got me this load is going to Union City Georgia and like I said I paid 700 for like 500 miles but coming in I did get a load that pays close to three dollars per mile that would come from New Jersey which all in all I, from New Jersey to Largo to back to Union City I think it was a little over 1600 miles and the total rate for that was was thirty five hundred dollars. So I'm looking right about right above two dollars per mile all in rate. So the the thing is with me with like my truck, like for my truck to run, you know, all expenses to be covered, I need to run at least one point three uh, dollars per mile. So that's without paying myself. So of course I have to eat, you know, I gotta feed myself and my family. So 1.3 is to run the business plus whatever I'm gonna pay myself. So anytime, you know, at least 1.8 per mile, you know, that's what I try to shoot for every time that, you know, I get a load. At the very minimum, of course, you know, I always try to get the best, you know, above two you know it used to be my my absolute bottom was two dollars but now times are just getting harder and you know the freight just getting worse and worse but how is it possible that the freight market for florida is so horrible and it's the whole entire state of florida like you got some bad bad cities in different states like Colorado for example like the Denver area the, the freight market is horrible but once you start going outside of that you know it gets a little bit better but the whole state of Florida every major city is just bad you cannot get anything above 1.5 per mile I mean you're lucky if you get 1.5 they were trying to send me to New Orleans which was 650 miles from where I was at and they wanted to pay five hundred dollars and fifty which the the load was a partial which if you connect two partials you know you can at least make some money out of it but what are the chances of two partial loads going to New Orleans in the same time at the same day and then you gotta calculate to see the delivery see if you're gonna be able to make both of them on time if they're not gonna you know intersect with each other on the times so like I don't understand how Florida can be so bad you know on the reefers they have their seasonal uh, seasons but drive-in ever since I've been doing this for three years now it's Florida it's always a dollar a dollar twenty per mile like how crazy is that I don't get it so the only way that I'll take one of these cheap loads going out is if they're light loads and it's a open pickup and delivery. If it's like appointment and heavy and especially if it's like 10 o'clock at night delivery, like I'm like, no, I'm just gonna deadhead up, up towards Georgia. Usually Georgia, I have better luck in Georgia than Alabama. But my buddy, he like 80 85 percent of the time he's always dead heading up north you know in the past i i delivered a load to jacksonville i even had to go all the way up to south carolina a few hundred miles you know just to get out of there and on the east coast you have savannah which is the major city between jacksonville and south carolina it's one of the bigger cities that's outside of georgia I mean outside of Florida that you might be able to get something but if there's nothing that day you know that it's paying good or whatever you're gonna have to go all the way up to South Carolina so yeah Florida's market is crazy I mean I don't get it like you figure it'd be, it'd be a hot market given that it's Florida but I'm fixing to head to my next pickup I'm gonna see what, what they load me up over there with
So once again, I have lucked out because they told me this load was going to be 35,000 pounds. I'm weighing about 7,000. CVS bandages. This is where I'm going uh, from Florida to, I'm going up to Atlanta, Georgia. Look at the trailer empty. Let's go. So here I am in Union City, Georgia. I got very lucky that they unloaded me because I showed up two hours late. So yesterday in Florida, I got loaded pretty late and I ran out of time to drive. So when I showed up this morning, I had an appointment at seven. I got there around nine and some places they're pretty strict on appointment times and you have to reschedule sometime. And today is Friday. If I had to reschedule, probably be till Monday. So I got pretty lucky that they unloaded me which I actually got here around 8.30, but, but by the time I checked in, it was already nine. I mean, there's about four trucks in line in front of me. And when I left, there was like at least 10 trucks waiting in line. I mean, there's probably a lot more than that, but it, it got so busy around here. I got lucky they unloaded me and my next pickup, it's in South Carolina. I'm headed to Denver, Colorado. The my pickup time is at three so by the time i leave i should be there right around time to pick it up so as long as they unload me by 12 you know it should be good for my next pickup <music> Let's see what we're taking to Denver, Colorado. On the paperwork it said refrigeration. Some fridges maybe? I don't know. Maybe a bunch of fridges. Oh. It's 5.30 in the morning. I just woke up, well, like 30 minutes ago, when I fixed and hit the road. I stayed here east of Kansas City at a, at a Walmart. Got some few groceries and stuff. But today might be the first time I get to see snow for the year. You know, it's, it's been snowing in several states already, like in Wyoming and the no northern states. But for me personally, I have yet to see snow. I think I'm, I'm gonna see it today when I get to Denver. You know, I saw like 30 or 40% uh, chance of snow along the way there, but we'll see. It is currently 37 degrees. I just stopped to get some fuel and take a shower. Now we get back on the road. Next stop is Denver, Colorado. Gotta stay bundled up cause ain't trying to get sick. Ain't nothing worse than being sick and being on the road. my delivery but they are closed but I'm gonna go ahead and stay the night here hopefully they don't kick me out because I'm just parked on the side of the road but there's a bunch of other trucks parked here too so I think it'll be all right I don't know see a bunch bunch of truck drivers on the on the side of the road there's the uh there's uh, where I gotta enter tomorrow morning, my delivery. 
So I was a little bit nervous coming up here because uh, it did snow over the weekend. And this morning it also snowed. I was a little bit nervous about how the roads were going to be, but they're, they're pretty dry. Everything went good. You know, I got here safe and sound. The, this whole next week, the, the weather's supposed to be good, so I ain't worried about the uh, next few days. So even though I have driven in, in the icy roads and snow in the past and stuff like that, you know, this is the first time I see snow, so, I mean, it's been a while, so first couple of times, you know, I'm gonna get nervous, but after a while, it's just like. So yeah, I guess this will be the end of the video. You know, I got my delivery tomorrow morning, and that'll be, I'll do my 34 hour reset tomorrow. Now drive safe, stay healthy out there. Thank you.